Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Leonardo AI image generation models and canvas, but it's a little bit of a deeper look here. First, we're going to hop over to our image generation. This is where we can see some of the things that we've generated in the past. You can see I've been trying to train a model to generate AI pictures of myself, but it's kind of looking weird. So maybe we need to get a little bit better at it. Let's take a look at our training and data sets here. I uploaded about 32 images, screenshots from my previous YouTube videos and TikTok videos. It's not the best material. I realistically should just conduct a photo shoot and take pictures of my face in different angles to give it the best shot possible to create a model. But what I did is I named it Young Buffett. The description is Young Buffett's face. So what you should be able to do from that is hop over to AI image generation. And in our fine tuned model, we can select a custom model where you can take a look at different platform models that are available. You can see 498,000 people have used Deliberate, 300,000 photos have been used to make RPG, 369,000 for Dream Shaper, and so on. And there are community models where different people have trained data sets that have different features. So you can definitely take a look and use that. So it has a very collaborative environment. That's something I really like about Leonardo. Leonardo. But what I'm interested in is Young Buffett's face. So we can take a look at this and we can generate using this model. And we just need to tweak the prompts a little bit and get it to where we where we really want it. So now that we have that data set set up over there, what we can do is hop over to the image generation, AI generation, type in Young Buffett, which is the title of our data set, and then start specifying some things that we're looking for, like colorful illustration of a highly detailed cyborg by, and then I copy and pasted some artists that I found on Google and from other stable diffusion generators. I saw some other people using these artists and I really like their style. So what we can do is type those in and then uh, write in a style of digital art, symmetry, sci-fi, gradient color, background, select the young Buffett, you could hit a Leonardo style or none. We'll test both to see what it looks like. We'll hit generate here and let it load. And in about 15 seconds or so, we have something that kind of looks like a young Buffett looking illustration. But what we can do is hit Leonardo style. Let's compare the two. We'll generate that with the same exact prompt. And it turned me into a girl. So I'm not quite sure about that Leonardo style. Let's add a negative prompt. Girl, female, woman. And let's add man manly colorful illustration and let's see what it does there all right i don't know what's going on with that mouth over there but if something like this happens let's go ahead and upscale this image real quick and i want to show you guys what we can do if we don't like something specific about an image using the canvas tool and as you can see now that it got upscaled it got a little weirder so let's go ahead and download this image it is now fully upscaled we're going to save and now typically what you would do is you would take something like this and and take it to photoshop to to finalize and touch and retweak it but instead of doing that let's hop over to leonardo let's go back to the ai canvas which is still currently in beta and then we'll upload the image from our computer or from previous generations. So if we just click on that, we can see this one that we generated, fit it within the 512 by 512, or we can bump it up all the way to 1024 by 1024. But let's just keep it small for now for demonstration purposes. And then right within this canvas tool, something that we can do is write a prompt, add a negative prompt, and tell Leonardo AI to update this picture to however we want it. Another super useful thing that we can do is we can draw a mask to signify where we want the edits. So let's just take this whole beard area and we'll write a prompt that says something like create a cyborg style metallic computer chip beard and we'll generate and get some options to review. And we got one option that still has a weird looking mouth. Option number two isn't the cyborg style metallic computer chip beard, but I mean, it fixed the beard in a way. Option number three, still kind of weird, but it looks like it matched the beard color. And option number four made me kind of look like a frog. So let's just cancel that. Let's see what else we can do here. So maybe instead of masking it, what we'll do is we'll just say, create a cyborg style metallic computer chip beard on the face and see what that does. All right, now let's take a look at some of these options. And it seems like it didn't do 
pretty much anything we ask it to do. Let's go ahead and cancel that again. Maybe we bump up the guidance scale, the step count to about 50, guidance scale to 10. Maybe we just mask the mouth. So it gave us a little set of lips. This one again broke outside of the mask. This one did a little bit of both. This one just made me look upset. Maybe we just keep things a little simpler. Make the hair color black and make the beard's hair color silver. Let's only generate one of these to see what that looks like so we don't burn all of our tokens. So it looked like it just added a silver border. So that's not what we're looking for. Let's try to draw a perfect mask here. And then let's keep the prompt simple again. Change the color of the beard to silver and metallic. Generate. And it seems to have given us a goatee situation. And it made the beard darker, but again, that's not exactly what we're looking for. Maybe if we try to, to scale it up and only have the mouth change the color of the, the yellow beard to silver. Let's just make it to a darker black color. Generate. And that seems to have done absolutely nothing. Now instead of changing something specific, let's see if we can change the entire style then. Change the style of this image to watercolor. Let's see if something simple like that works. What did that do? It looks like it just made it a little bit worse quality. Let's try this. Let's just say the words watercolor. Let's see what that does. Again, didn't seem to change much. Well, I'm not sure if we're doing anything wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions on how to best use this canvas tool, because the power here is amazing. If we can generate images and then within the same platform, take it over to a canvas, we have a lot of flexibility on things that we can do without having to take it over to something like Photoshop. I also got a comment the other day on one of my other videos that talked about Leonardo about how this could be a very useful feature for somebody who's doing product photography. For example, if you're doing product photography and you have your product laying on a background like this, if you come in and you say, change the background to grass, take your mask tool and mask out the background that you're trying to change. That's good enough, let's see. And just like that, your product image is now sitting on grass. Obviously next time come in and, and clean up your mask or something like this is actually pretty cool too. Let's. Let's erase our previous mask. And then let's say we want to hop in here and add something to the phone. And we'll add a mask. And if you hold shift, you can get these straight lines and then just fill in between the lines. So now we have a relatively nice mask. Change the white screen to a picture of illustrated outer space. Generate. And look, now instead of having this very basic product picture of an iPhone on a wooden background, you now have an iPhone with a outer space illustration on top of this little wood slab over some grass. All AI generated, all just prompt based, just talking to the system without having to take it over to Photoshop. Now a cool feature would be if they had a text editor or other image editing capabilities where maybe if this is the product that you're trying to sell, you could add a title here, or you could change the saturation of the grass and make it a little greener, or hop in here and clean up all of the little edges and have it clean it up with AI. So that could be another cool feature. But overall, it's interesting to see what you can and can't do. The limitations of AI art are very apparent. Uh, we're very early. These things are very new, but it's very exciting to see the advancement of this technology. Um, I'm very excited to see where this stuff will go in the future. And if you want to stay up to date with what's going on in the future, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.